Hi friends, in this video we're gonna go through some overlooked post-punk albums you need to hear. Where are my post-punk people? Did you make it? Is everyone in the record room? Rad. Hey everyone, it's Hannah the Omaha Introvert. It's that time. What time you ask? Time for me to talk about my undying love for post-punk, of course. If you're new to my channel, I am proud of the fact that I bring more of the obscure or less appreciated bands. Um, I give them the mentions that they deserve, basically. So if you're looking for strictly Beatles content, you will not find it here, okay? Although I do have a video topic um, in the future that is Beatles related without directly featuring the Beatles. Ha! You're intrigued now, aren't you? I know you are. <laughs> Moving on. So this is just going to be like a vinyl and CD update of gems that have somehow managed their way into the collection. Some of these I actually found out through viewer recommendations and others I have just discovered recently on my own or perhaps I've wanted them for a while and now they live here in this sanctuary amongst my other record treasures. So before, <laughs> so listen, before I get people all coming up in here asking where's the Joy Division, where's the Chameleons, it's okay darling. Seriously, I covered those bands in two prior videos if you want to go back and check them out. But as you'll notice by the title, <laughs> this is overlooked post-punk bands and albums that I would like to feature in this video. I'm just like head over heels for post-punk. Um, I think my obsession started during the pandemic and it's just grown stronger every year. So um, I've just been kind of collecting post-punk like mad, like I'm deep in the genre now. It's just a continued deep dive and exploration. Cool? Let's begin. So I wanted to mention another channel really quick. Uh, his name is Andy, the channel name is Suffolk Audiophile, and he did a top 10 post-punk albums video. Very well done. It's probably a video topic I will do in the future, although I might do a top 20. Anyway, he mentioned this band in his top 10 and I've been meaning to circle back to this band for a while and I finally did recently. I first sampled them, I wanna say a few years ago and I didn't like them. Like I remember that distinctly, I did not like them. This was before I was all in regarding post-punk. Like I just didn't get their sound, you know, so I gave up on them. So I gave them another chance a few weekends ago and I just, I fell hard for them. So I ordered four of their records all on eBay. I sampled them all, of course. These were all very affordable, like less than the price of a brand new record. Um, three of these, well, actually one of these is a new reissue, but the other three are originals. So this band, um, they were a duo, they're still around. I think their latest album was released in 2019, but they have close to, I think 20 albums or so under the Eyeless and Gaza name. I really like the singer's vocals. They're pretty unique. They definitely won't be for everyone though. Uh, Martin Bates, I think is the singer. I would describe his vocals as a mix between Andy Partridge of XTC with Elvis Costello, maybe some David Sylvian of Japan, only a little bit more angry at times and dramatic. I don't know if that makes any sense, but um, at least on these earlier releases, which I actually prefer, um, they're more experimental. There's some angular guitar strumming and the vocals. I mean, they can be really intense with these early albums and sometimes it's just a strumming guitar with the vocals perhaps a bit of organ percussion isn't too prominent but i'm just enjoying the hell out of this band so this first album photographs as memories this is a spittle records release i really like the reissues they've been putting out i feel like they're pretty good quality so yeah you get peculiar analog synth lines and a jungle of electric guitars plastic organs soprano saxophones percussion violin stylophone and tapes yeah, it's a very experimental endeavor. So that's their first record. And then I got, um, this one is probably my favorite of theirs that I've heard so far. This is Caught in the Flux. And it's probably like the one I've spent the most time with and the first one I sampled thoroughly. So that's probably why I love it so much. But this is an original and it came with um, their first, or it came with like a, a 12 inch EP. So it's called The Eyes of Beautiful Losers and then it goes on into the album on the other disc with Cotton Flux. Check out the song Voice from the Tracks. It's really haunting. I don't know, that song is very moving to me. Point You is good, Rose Petal Knot. 
skeletal framework. Yeah, if you want to check them out, um, this is where I started. I feel like it's a good starting point, but again, they're not going to be for everyone. And then I picked up Drumming the Beating Heart, another original uh, Cherry Red Records. And then this one, this is Rust Red September. This one is more of a commercial, it has more of a commercial sound on it. So the guitar playing is so beautiful though. I I really like this one. Uh, my favorite songs are No Perfect Stranger. And then, let's see, what's the one on the other side I really like? Uh, Only Whispers. I think I like the other three a little bit more than this one. And again, this is on Cherry Red. Next, I want to show two albums that Kurt sent me. I bought records before from Kurt's Discogs page, and he has sent me plenty of music-related gifts in the past. His Discogs handle is KurtJ98 if you want to take a look-see at what he has for sale. I don't think I ever shared uh, the record haul um, that I bought from his Discogs a few months ago, but he's a former Nebraska resident. He's also a big fan of this band right here. He's actually friends with several of the members of the band to like for against for an excellent post-punk band from Lincoln, Nebraska, which is, you know, about an hour south of Omaha. So underrated. I believe in my first post-punk video, I did mention them. In fact, you'll see down there, um, I am displaying their first album, Echelons. He really has been helping me with my for against collection like the last two years or so. So this is their first seven inch. What an amazing, piece to have. Uh, it has their songs Autocrat and It's a Lie. This is number 374 out of a thousand. Yeah, you don't see this every day. That is just too cool. And then this masterpiece album. This is what's considered their best album. It's titled December. What's neat is that they incorporate like jangly guitars in their music, which is definitely up my alley, of course, but um, excellent bass lines, just Dreamy and jangly guitars, vocals full of melancholy. Love the song Stranded in Greenland, The Effect, the title track, December, as well as The Last Laugh. But yeah, I consider this uh, a top post-punk record if you haven't heard it. Like seriously, this is one of the best under the radar albums out there, people. Check it out. This was released in 1988 and I don't know, I'm just, I'm obsessed with it. It's on Independent Project Records. Of course, that's upside down, but um, yeah, check out Four Against. Then the other one he sent, and this is just like so exciting for me to own this on vinyl. This is Modern Eons Fiction Tales. And in another video of mine, I showed the CD, the expanded CD set right here that was just released this year on Cherry Red Records. Very well done, but um, yeah, I just, I love having the vinyl of it, of course. So um, yeah, it's on DIN disc. Like I said, original Canadian. I don't know why this hasn't been reissued to vinyl. Uh, I'm gonna keep this brief as I have discussed them in a prior video, but they were a band from Liverpool, UK. It has some very unique sounds, very ahead of its time. It's dark and dreamy, so check it out. I, I just really wanna thank you, Kurt, for sending me this. So cool to own it. I will show one more that I bought from his Discogs a while back. So this is Fra Lipo Lippi. <laughs> Hopefully I'm saying that right. This is their album Small Mercies. It's their second studio album. I will say that their first album titled In Silence, that's the one that typically is more akin to the post-punk sound, uh, early Cold Wave too, but they were from Norway. This has more uh, piano in it, which I really like. It still retains um, the darkness, but it, it doesn't have perhaps as much darkness as that first album, but still post-punk. I would consider it post-punk, so. But yeah, check out their first album. Don't skip over that one. Oh, let us feature a brand new album next. So this is Ist Ist <laughs> with their third studio album titled Protagonists. And this was just released a few months ago in March, I believe. And I've been following them since their first album. I believe that album was 
called Architecture, but I really want their first two albums, but the shipping is just insane. Like whenever I try to get stuff from them, like in their website, it's just, ugh, it's so expensive. Like you can end up paying $50, which I just, I didn't want to do. So I'm keeping a lookout for those albums. I just, I don't want to pay that high shipping cost. So, um, and I got this one from eBay for a decent price. This band is from Manchester. They formed in 2014. The singer is literally channeling Ian Curtis of Joy Division. Seriously, give them a listen. Let me know what you think. If he sounds like Ian Curtis, I'm pretty sure you're going to agree with me on that. But I love Nothing More, Nothing Less, All Downhill, Fool's Paradise. This is just a solid modern post-punk band if you're looking for something new. So check out Ist Ist. Next, we have a band called Crispy Ambulance. And this album of theirs is titled The Plateau Phase. Uh, we have another band from Manchester here, so this is just a classic post-punk release. Uh, this band formed in 1977. This is their only studio album of that era. They reformed again later in the 90s, I think the late 90s, and recorded a few more albums, but I think Factory Records first rejected them and then later signed them. Um, a lot of reviews compare them to Joy Division, but I mean, I don't understand why. Just because it's post-punk, I think people just like to assume if it's post-punk, it must sound like Joy Division. But um, I would say this band is more comparable to Public Image Limited, but they're kind of their own deal. I wouldn't say this would be one of my favorite post-punk albums, but it is notable. I love how the drums are loud and upfront in the mix. And I got this actually at Jurassic Plastic. This is a Jurassic Plastic reissue from a few years ago. And I stopped in there a month or two before they closed and I had never seen this reissue there before. So they must have found it like in a back room or something or somewhere hidden because I had literally never seen it there before and you'll see like the cover there's maybe it was left out in the sun or something but you'll see like some discoloration but brand new it was like 13 dollars crazy so i'm glad i grabbed it i think a lot of you mentioned crispy ambulance in my first post-punk episode so you know i i pay attention to the comments that you guys leave and then i check out bands uh later on and that's really fun for me so how about a band called Aerial FX with Watching the Dance? This is uh, a Radiation Records reissue. I'm just gonna read some of the front here. Uh, Moody Oxford Post-Punk Quintet. Uh, the promise of their minimal sound with its prominent synthesizers yielding a publishing deal with Island Records and then an early single released by the label. Debut album Watching the Dance has shades of dark synth pop and goth with future Radiohead manager and producer Chris Hufford. The influence of acts like Vandergraaff Generator, Modern Eon, and others lurk beneath this hidden cold wave gem. So I, I don't know, I'm just really happy with uh, both Spittle Records and Radiation Records for putting out these kind of lost post-punk classics. So yeah, there's really solid drumming on this one. There's a song called Hold Me. It's like super catchy and melodic and it I don't know, it could have been a hit. And also there's a song called Accident that I really like. Check out Aerial Effects. How about some CDs next? So a generous viewer named Mark Harris sent me a package a while back that had a bunch of legendary pink dots and some other stuff in it. But these two CDs were also in there and I was just kind of waiting for the right time to talk about these bands. So the first one is Thick Pigeon with the album Two Crazy Cowboys. And I will, um, so over here, over here, I'll put a picture of the original artwork, but this is just so cool. Like this is one of the overlooked albums on the Factory Records label. This is a duo from New York, Stanton Miranda. Uh, she's the female vocalist and she played bass and then Carter Burrell was the other member. Um, they had help with two members of New Order. So Stanton Miranda was also in a band called CKM with Kim Gordon before Thick Pigeon and she played drums. Like, isn't that awesome? So this is just really offbeat, artsy, new wave and post-punk. And I, I love her vocals and just like the whole wacky vibe. So here's a picture of CKM there. Yeah, and then liner notes. 
then some pictures. Definitely check out the first track, Troglodytes. I also really like Help and Fred and Andy. Nuns and Soldiers is a good instrumental track. And check out Wheels Over Indian Trails as well. So if you come across the CD or even the vinyl, grab it. I doubt I'll ever find a vinyl copy, but I really dig this. So thank you, Mark. I will try to include a song clip or two here. It's And then he also sent a band called the 39 Clocks with Paint It Dark. So this was originally released in 1981. This is a 2009 reissue. So this is gonna appeal to you, and it has a nice little booklet in here. This will appeal to you if you want to hear some psychedelia in your post-punk, maybe a little bit of Velvet Underground in your post-punk. So 39 Clocks, they were a duo from Germany. By the way, I have more German post-punk coming up later in the video, but I didn't think too much of this when I first heard it. But upon listening to it even more, it slowly grew on me. I just love the sludgy guitar riffs. It's very lo-fi. The lyrics are spoken more than sung, but check out the song 78 Soldier Dead, Psycho Beat, and Test the Beat. But yeah, thanks to Mark for sending me some pretty obscure post-punk gems. Like these are treasures. Love these a lot. We have a band called The Passions next. And if it weren't for you guys, like leaving me comments, recommendations and such, I would not have ever heard of this band. So <laughs> this is a band from London and I have their first two records now. So this one and this one. So these were hard to get. Uh, this one I got from an overseas vendor. The second one I bought from a Discog seller here in the States, but apparently they were amazing live and they even opened up for The Cure around 1980 and there's just excellent playing on here. I think I like this one a little bit more. There's great bass lines. The guitars are even quite tangly at moments, but this is a really interesting listen. I'd say being on Fiction Records makes you automatically cool. <laughs> so right there, um, let's see. Oh, here's the back cover, I'll show that. I really like the songs, Oh No, It's You, uh, Suspicion, Absentee, and Why Me. Um, so yeah, check out, oops, check out The Passions with Michael and Miranda. That's their first one. And then this is their second one, 30,000 Feet Over China, and this one's on Polydor. So this one definitely is more polished and perhaps more pop and new wave than the first. Uh, definitely a lot more atmospheric, which I like too, but this is absolutely terrific. So this includes um, their hit, I'm in love with a German film star. And yeah, like it indicates, The Swimmer, that's also a song I really like. I'm loving this band, so thank you for your recommendations on the passions. It led me to buy use copies of the records. Oh, this one, hmm. This is kind of a different listen. So this is Savage Republic with their second album from 1985, Ceremonial. I bought this on eBay for like $16 or so. I read there's a reissue of this without the vocals. I would actually recommend that version because of the few tracks that have vocals are pretty off key and awful. I hate to say that, but um, I believe my copy's a first issue. It doesn't have the, the band name on the cover. I don't really know how to describe this. I wouldn't really label it as an all out post-punk record. Like their first album has more of a tribal flavor and it's different from this. So um, their side band is 17 Pygmies. I actually um, have a couple of their records, but I don't really think much of that side project. It's uh, definitely more pop than this. Not bad, but not great either. So um, yeah, if you want something different, I mean, check this out. This is Savage Republic with Ceremonial. 
Okay, next we have a very interesting band, Dog Faced Hermans. So they're actually from Scotland. Shout out to Nick Schultz who introduced this band to me uh, months ago. They were an offshoot of a band called The X from the 80s. I have a record by The X, but it's not one of their better ones in my opinion. It's Dignity of Labor. But anyway, back to Dog Faced Hermans. Uh, originally, this was released in 1994. This is so like deliciously chaotic and odd. It has some elements of kraut rock and even some shoegaze drenched guitars. But if you don't like a horn section near post-punk, maybe avoid this completely. This is probably gonna be unlistenable to many people, but I love how unpredictable this is. Like you don't know what direction they're taking with the music next. It just, it keeps it really interesting, you know? And I like that about music, so. I love the female vocals on this. Their stuff is really hard to find. This reissue is a bit easier to find, but I'm not sure if their other records have been reissued to vinyl. I don't think so, but um, this is one of their last releases, I believe. But you can find this online, but definitely sample it first, people, because I don't want you to come back and say, I bought that record and it sucks ass. You gotta sample it for yourself. Next, we have another interesting band. This is Contortions with Bi. Um, so this, uh, along with James White and the Blank, James White and the Blacks with Off-White, like these are companion records, you could say. And I wanna say thank you to Thomas, uh, or you may know him as Flannel Surfer on Instagram. We did a really excellent trade recently and I got some great titles from him. So um, he sent me some like water damaged covers, but the vinyl is just in perfect shape and I don't care so much about the covers. I can always upgrade the covers later on, but um, he also sent me Devo's Duty Now for the Future, as well as Para Ubu's New Picnic Time. So it's just really rad to have copies of those as well. But anyway, James Chance, um, like these records were part of the no wave scene in New York. And this is like some deranged avant-garde, dancey post-punk, really funky bass lines, kind of jazzy. Uh, the weird scratchy guitars draw me in the most. And I wouldn't consider these too accessible to most ears, but um, you definitely have to be into the avant-garde stuff to appreciate this. and. I don't know, I really, I really dig this. So, especially this one, I like this one a little bit more than this one. This one actually has a collaboration with Lydia Lunch. It's the second track, Stain Sheets, but it's so freaking weird. It's like she's moaning through the whole song. <laughs> I don't know if that's gonna be your thing or not, but um, yeah, the back is pretty, it's damaged, but the vinyl is perfect. So, that's that one. But the songs I really like on Bye would have to be um, Contort Yourself, I Don't Want to Be Happy, and Twice Removed. So just, I don't know, check these out for yourself, all right? <laughs> it's weird stuff. It also says recommended for fans of ESG, Bush Tetras, and Para Ubu. Oh, this band. Okay, so we have Asylum Party next. And apparently these albums are reissued to vinyl every couple of years, and I just happened to see um, a few months ago that this is the year apparently. So now is your chance to get some Asylum Party reissues. The originals are just damn near impossible to get. So I'll leave the link below to where you can get these. I think it's Deanwell Global Music or something like that. Anyway, this is like a French cold wave post-punk band. Their music can get a little tiresome and samey, but I love these. Like these are worthy additions if you're into the cold wave, goth, post-punk scene of the 80s. So this one's probably a little more well-known, their borderline record. So good. This one's on black vinyl. This one I believe is on clear. Yeah, it's just clear vinyl. Asylum Party. Very exciting to get those reissues. Let's go to Germany, shall we? Uh, so this is a band called Ideal, and some of you noticed in my last video that I had this displayed on the wall behind me. Only about half of it was in the shot, so, um, but some of you, like, definitely knew what it was, and that's very observant of you. <laughs> you guys are really 
just on it with these obscure albums. So that's cool. Bravo. But some people enjoy the second album a little more than this debut, but this debut is the only one I have. So therefore we are only discussing this one. And I mean, their opening track is Berlin. Come on. <laughs> Such a killer opening track, but um, this is like a blend of post-punk and new wave, but there's alternating male and female vocals. Show a picture of the back. I really like the female vocalist, Annette. So uh, this is worth hearing for sure. Check out Ideal with her self-titled album. More from Germany. We got Fellfarben, and I'm not even gonna say, <laughs> I'm not even gonna say the title there. But they were a band from Dusseldorf, Germany. So this is German punk slash post-punk. This is like a highly acclaimed German punk album, okay? It's so good. I'm not gonna try to pronounce anything on here, all right? We're, we're not going there, because <laughs> I will butcher everything. But here's the label. Yep, I bought this from that, um, e not eBay, Discog seller in Poland that I bought four records from. And this was like cheap. I think it was like $5 and I mean, I paid the shipping on top of that. Super cheap, but this is very like Gang of Four-esque with the guitars. I don't know what else to say. It's just brilliant stuff. Uh, this is a favorite. What do we got next? I'm just getting stuff. Oh, after I film these videos, I have to put everything away and it just like, <laughs> it can take me up to like a half hour depending on how many records I pull. So this one, Brow Zone, uh, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Uh, just look there, okay? It means gray area in German and they were actually from Switzerland. So this is their only studio album from 1981. And some of this is very dance-like. Uh, I got this last week, so I'm still absorbing it. Um, the first disc is all I've listened to so far. I haven't even spun the second disc yet. Side one of disc one is very difficult for me. Side two, like I'm totally on board with, but I gotta give it some more listens. But it definitely seems like they were pioneers of their time. And I'm sorry, this isn't really gonna be much of a helpful review, but I'm glad I got it. So if you wanna know, this is the 40 year anniversary edition double LP. Um, it's got nine additional songs. And it says post-punk, avant-garde, pop, experimental, new wave, introspective, minimalism, Swiss electronic, romantic, industrial, good music. <laughs> and it came with, um, it kind of just explains like a little bit of track history. And I'll just show one of these. It's on this label and I forget what this stands for, but it's uh, WRWTFWW Records. Oh yes, uh, lastly, we have Cabaret Voltaire. So during my stop at the Omaha Record Show last month, I picked up Cabaret Voltaire's Code album and it was five or seven dollars, so I just figured why not. And on eBay, I bought this three CD lot. Um, I had heard Red Mecca before, which is in here. And I gotta admit, I'm liking it more and more each time I listen to it. It's really taking several listens for me to latch on to it. But also their album, The Crackdown, very good. And I got this uh, CD lot for like $15 on eBay. So if you look on eBay, you can find anything on there. I love going for record or CD lots to save some money. Um, so this is their BBC recordings, 84 to 86. That was also included. I haven't gotten to this one yet. And then this one just arrived like minutes before I started filming this video. I bought what's supposed to be an original copy of their album, Microphonies. This is very, very cool and exciting for me. I think it's, yeah, it's, I think this is an original UK. I mean, I'll find out later if I was cheated or not. Anyway, I can't say much about this either. I did sample it on Apple Music and I mean the song I really fell in love with is Sensoria, the the last song. <laughs> so I have some more listening to do with this, but this is the one I really wanted to get on vinyl first. Just 
Oh Lord, that was a lot. <laughs> I hope you folks took some notes. Those were some overlooked post-punk bands and albums that I think you should hear. This was fun. If you want me to maybe do a top 20 favorite post-punk albums video, let me know. I'm gonna try to get to the Susie and the Banshees album ranking video together next. I have some more work to do on that one, uh, quite a bit more work. So uh, please have a wonderful week. Let me know which of these albums or bands you enjoy or what you're listening to this week. I'm always curious to hear from you. Uh, I enjoy the comments, so thank you so much. See you guys next time, bye.